Oh yeah. Coyotes. Yeah. They sounded like human. <laughs> At first it sounded like yeah. chanting. Yeah. And singing. But they are the singers, right? Yeah, yeah. they are. Like singing spirit. The most beautiful yeah. creature that I've ever been put on earth with us. So we're here with uh, Roland Roland Mud on the shores of Hector Lake at Nakota Lodge, the future home of the Nakota Journey. Um, Roland, thanks a whole lot for coming, for being with us today. Thank you very um, much. Probably start, maybe just have you tell us a little bit about you and growing up and your your challenges and the journey that's brought you to where you are. Okay. So I think your story is pretty inspirational. Well, let me start from four years old, as much as I can remember. Because when I was four, I could realize and understood the, uh, the world of what it's going to be like. I could remember the time we went to a dance, and it was a celebration dance of, of uh, going to the New Year. And we went down there on horse and buggy. So it was a beautiful moonlight. I could remember it just like right now. And we were traveling and it was a nice calm night. And the celebration was already getting prepared at the hall. And when we got there, it was starting to get busy. People were getting gearing up their regalia and everything. And that's the first time I understood that that was the most beautiful thing that life is going to be like. Um, of course it started and there was a powwow song and everybody danced and that was... Then they, they feed us apple, which is the first time that I have tasted Taste an apple. apple. Yeah, <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. But they didn't give us the whole apple, they cut it in half, so we all shared what they could. So it was a time of a, a celebration, but learn how to preserve your food also to make it last make longer. It. Yeah. And then after that, we went back home, and it was probably one o'clock at night, and it was a beautiful, again, it, it hit the rice time of uh, being a youth and you could see just like daylight in the moonlight and when we get our head out of the blanket it was a canvas my dad or mom would tell us go back there you're gonna freeze and it was a beautiful day like what it is right now so I figured that life was going to be great but right after that that following year I was struck with uh, uh, a disease which is TB and I didn't understand it at first and I was told that I have to go to a place to heal but they can't do it at home of course TB was untreatable at home at that time so uh, at first it kind of bothered me but I, I really have to go otherwise my brother died of that I, I didn't know about that, but they told me that it's, it's going to be bad if I don't. So I did go, and then after two years, I came back. That's when I was four. I came back when I was six, and that's when I was so excited. I was ready for the world, and they had a feast for me, and I was happy to see my dad. He was the first one to greet me. And I told myself, where is mom? Why? She's probably preparing the feast. Mm. So uh, the, all my brothers and sisters were happy to see me back. Cause, and I spoke English through it. Because right. I learned in two years. And then once we start having, the, they said a grace and blessing and everything, and um, my auntie came, I thought that was my mom. And there's two aunties, they both came, and my uncle, and we all feasted, and here mom wasn't there yet. Then they told me that mom is gone. 
And I said, where? And you will see him in time, but not here, not on earth. She died, she passed away. So that's something new in life that I have understood that I don't have a mother. Um, um, but yet, it didn't stall me. I was excited for my own life of what I am going to experiment. Now that I'm cured, I'm ready for the excitement. Um, right after the, the TB ordeal, two years, the following year, I came home when I was six. That fall, I was sent to school. Okay. So I never stayed at home. I was sent away again to residential school. To residential school. Yeah. And receiving what I have received in Edmonton is the beauty of kindness, acceptance that the teacher, the nurses gave me. I was excited to learn more because I, I know I could learn more from where I'm going. But it was a different story. Of course, residential is everybody doesn't like residential. It's totally different. Yeah. yeah. You have to defend yourself. That's where I learned the bad things. But again, I, I picked up the good things too. So it wasn't, I kind of put aside the bad things and just go with the good things. And that's where I learned a lot. I made a lot of friends and of course we have altercations, but it was part of the growing up. Yeah. It sounds like you made a you, you hit a point in your life there where you started to become form your philosophy, which is you take the good things. Yeah, so yeah. It's within your power. Um, I after the school was over, I was happy to be back, and then of course I was seven years old, and my first year of learning to be with my parent, which was my dad. My sisters, and my brothers. So it was a different learning, but uh, to be loved and and be free, left alone for the two two months while I was at home. Yep. June, July, August, we started to get ready to go back to school. And then that's where I was encountered by Bath and Young Days. That was something that attached to me that, hey, we're going away to a place where I have never been. So I do believe we went by train at that time, because we were taking our luggage down to mm -hmm. the train station, I can remember, and then we boarded the train and we got dropped off in Bath and we were picked up by the Brewster bus and brought back to the Bath and then they go. So there, to some, when you lost a parent, you seem to get distracted by that and feel that you are abandoned, but you are not. When your determination of how you have developed life at a very young age, that stayed with me, that I, I could survive in a place, because I was in Edmonton, and there was no need to, to be afraid of anything. But school, of course, it's on the reserve, so it's not like Edmonton. So here, I have taken off from school probably about four times because I didn't want to stay there, but I, I came back. And then after 16, I was finished with school. So that it only, only went up to grade nine, but I, I went to grade six. But there at school, I picked up the art. There were beautiful paintings, pictures. They were painting, but it was pictures of, um, it was Carl Wenders, yeah, the wild artist. And he comes down to the Bath School of Fine Arts and he was doing, probably teaching there during his prime. 
And what inspired me is the wildlife of how he created the everything. Brought the images together. Yeah. To life, yeah. And then at Morley there was art teaching and that really inspired me more. So then you so you were inspired you were already attracted to art at that time? Yes. But you went on to do a trade. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So maybe tell us a little bit about that transition to doing the trade and and return eventually to art. Okay. How did that uh, like after being a teenager, I was sixteen and then seventeen I went to work in our jobs because we have to start supporting the family that we are. And at an early age, my dad kind of, uh, he didn't push me. But I myself have learned to take care of things at a young age, and I, I was very aggressive that way. So I, I wanted to do, because my dad is a carpenter, and we would go to, he would go to work and I would go with him and while he's doing the carpenter, I would have my time of doing whatever. And then I was invited to, to learn how to nail and what, everything about right. the roofs and everything. So when I, in the fall, they had a courses at trade, carpentry. So I took that trade. So it wasn't, it was about three month course of how to, how to build. Yeah. So my dad was already a carpenter. He, he built the house that we live in. So that's what I wanted to do. So I, I, I started as a carpenter. And eventually, they brought some courses from SAIT, the University of Calgary, how to. So that's where I picked up how to become a skill with, with my hand. And eventually, I, I was involved with the house building. That, that spring. So I, I could uh, do presses and stuff like that. Uh, it, it, life was good. I, I really enjoyed that after that. And then I worked as a carpenter for the reserve. And then I, as I grew older, like 18, 19, my sister wanted me to go home with them in Nordic. So I went to Nordic and eventually uh, got a job there. Not as a carpenter, but I, I did land a job with uh, logs, sawmill. Mm -hmm. So I stayed there for two years as getting to do to work for this company. Eventually I got back to Carpenter again after I came home. So, uh, obviously I worked as a Carpenter till 1968. 69, that seemed to, the oil money seemed to take out jobs. Like they were, they were hiring contractors right. and they didn't need us anymore. So that's, 1970, I didn't have a job, but I could find art jobs with anything that I could find. And then 71, there was a program called Stony Cultural Educational Program. So I put a, there was an application to get an artist. So I put my application in, and I got the job. So from there, I did illustration for this program. Then after 23, I was sent to the Alberta College of Art. So things connect as I go, yeah. But I forgot that back at Bighorn, I went there when I was 15 just for the summer before I go back to school. Okay. And I almost died there. 